What's going on YouTube? This is Mark with Waist Deep Weight Fishing Southwest Florida. How's everyone doing out there? Hope all is going well. So today, I want to discuss a couple of things with you. What is going on in the fishing world as far as weight fishermen? What is going on in Florida? What is going on in Southwest Florida for the guys that don't have the boats or don't feel like going on the boat or the kayak? So what do you do? Where do you go? What's biting? So today what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna discuss that, uh, what's going on, where they're biting, what type of fish are biting, and what they're biting on, and when's the best time to get out there and catch those fish. So till then, hold on, give me a couple of minutes to get everything together, and I'm gonna be right back with that information. What's going on YouTube? This is Mark with Waist Deep Wade Fishing, Southwest Florida, and we are ready to get this thing rolling. All the information that I got from my local fishermen, my local wade fishing guys and gals, local uh, bait shops, um, guides that are out there doing business, people that are out there that I contact on Facebook through social networking that are out there weight fishing in some of the areas that I fish in. Um, just about it, any type of uh, info I can get on where the fish are at, I get it. So today I have it all logged up in my computer, so I'm going to go ahead and read it all off to you so this way you get a better opportunity to get out there this weekend and catch some fish. And what a lot of people don't know is you can spend 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars on that beautiful boat, and yeah, it's convenient. And it'll get you some fish, you know, if you want to go offshore. Um, you know, and that flats boat will get you to the grass flat. But the truth of the matter is, the best way to get the big trophy trout and those huge redfish and those massive snook is if you get out of that boat and walk the flat quietly and stalk your prey. It's a proven fact. Wade fishermen catch the biggest and the most fish on any given weekend using artificials. So with that being said, let's go ahead and begin and start this off. One of my favorite areas in the world to fish, the Boquillo Grass Flats. Got a lot of snook out there now. A lot of snook are, started coming, are starting to come in from the spawn. There's a large beach area around the Jug Creek Shoals. There are a lot of sharks out there. So if you are weed fishing, be careful. Keep your eyes open. If you see something that doesn't look that doesn't look right, if you're on your kayak, get back in the kayak. If, you, if you're out there and you're waiting, backpedal to the shore. There's no need to, to get yourself into any trouble. Um, haven't seen too many tarpon out there yet. The redfish are still hitting on the incoming tide early in the morning, especially on the negative tide. When I say negative, when you're getting closer to the full moon, I'm talking negative one, negative three, negative five. Get there when the water is very low. It condenses all of the bait into those little deeper pockets, into those deeper potholes. And guess what those redfish are gonna be? Sitting in those potholes waiting. Next, we're gonna move on out to my second favorite spot in the world. And it's probably one of the biggest estuaries, the most well-known estuaries, and probably has one of the largest sandbars in the country. And I'm talking about Burnt Store Sandbar. We've got a couple of cobia up on the sandbar, tons of sharks. I'm not making my way out, it's summertime. I don't really head out to that sandbar. There was a couple of trout and Spanish mackerel along the bar. If you're on the yak or the boat, feel free to do it. I personally am not walking out there. I will stay within the grass. Uh, again, on the low tide you want to get there, preferably early in the morning. Um, with a light wind coming at you um, with an incoming tide and you're going to be fishing around the oyster bars near the mangroves in anywhere from one to three foot. The bait of choice is going to be a gold spoon, a chartreuse or black jig head and I would use anywhere from a three and a quarter inch paddle tail up to a five inch paddle tail and in, in all types of colors, electric chicken, um, golden red, gold, chicken on a chain, 
pink, um, you know, whatever floats your boat. Go down there, throw a couple, see what works for you. I know what works for me, but again, like with fishing, um, it's called fishing, not catching. So you got to go out there and experience and see what's going to work for you. Top water in the morning has been excellent on trout over at Burn Store. Um, walk out about 200 yards until the water gets above the knee on the low tide. Start throwing she dogs or top dogs along the grass. Fantastic, excellent trout are out there biting. The next wade fishing spot, and I've actually been putting up a couple of videos on it. I've been hitting it lately uh, because of the, of the reports of big trout being in there. I haven't personally got any big ones, you know. We've got a couple between 16 and 20. Uh, but I have been getting them on the top water on the early bite in the morning on the incoming tide. Uh, on the outgoing, absolutely nothing. After 10 o'clock, you might as well go home. So I would suggest if you're going to go out to those Sanibel Flats, it's right before you go over the bridge in Punta Rasa on the left-hand side. Get there at sunup, fish it from about 6 to 9.30. As that tide comes in, once that sun comes up high, forget about it, the fishing is done. Um, in the wintertime, there's a lot of redfish there. I have yet to been going there for two weeks now. have not seen one redfish. I uh, have caught over a dozen trout. Um, a lot of them on top water. So if you're looking for some top water fun in the morning, that's the place to be. Moving right along to El Joe Bean Pier. It is open snook fishing at night. Throwing flare hawks, throwing Rapala x wraps size 10s, throwing jigs, live bait, um, whatever your fancy is. The snook are there. And they are prolific, and they are big. Anywhere from 30, as big as 45 inches, I've heard. The snook are starting to show up on the beaches. Unfortunately, the beaches have been closed. So, I can't really report on it, but I will be heading out to the beaches uh, within the next week or, ter week or two, early in the morning. Um, definitely on an incoming tide to fish those trough lines to find those big breeding females. And last but not least... Uh, Mount Lachey Bridge, Snook at Night, Monsters. They are, uh, they are going to be, if you go there at night time on an incoming tide, you know, get ready. Flare Hawks, <clears throat> Bigs Plastic Swim Baits, uh, Live Bait, whatever you prefer. Throw them down in the pilings, run those lures along the pilings, along the shadow line. On the incoming tide, outgoing not so well, but definitely make sure it's at night. During the day, very, very slow. Around the Mount Lachey Pine Island area, work all the mangroves um, on, the incoming on the incoming tide. But now, since it's a lot warmer out, as that water is coming up, um, when that water gets above that line, when you find pockets of, of mangrove line, that are in between one and three foot deep, right against the mangroves, target those. Nine out of ten times there's going to be a snook or a redfish up sitting in there in, in the shade um, as far as Mount Lachey. All the oyster bars out there in the Pine Island, in the Indian, in the Indian fields, um, all the grass flats out in that area are producing redfish. Nothing has really changed out there. I haven't been out in that area, so I can't make a report on it because I haven't been there, but from what I heard, they are still there. Fish the mangrove lines, it's summertime, beat the bushes, you know, mirror lures, uh, mirror deans, subsurface lures, um, quarter ounce, eighth ounce jig heads, you know, try to match the hatch, be a little creative, you know, sometimes if you see everything that's silver, throw that electric chicken, throw that chartreuse when everything else looks silver. Throw that top water when the, you know, the sun, is, it, it's, it's the middle of the afternoon uh, and it's 12 o'clock and you're on a grass flat and you happen to see some mullet run by. Experiment. See what works for you. You never know what's out there. Again, that's why they call it fishing, not catching. Again, this was Mark with Waste Deep Wade Fishing Southwest Florida. I love you all. I appreciate all the sponsorships that are coming in, all of the good info um, that is being uh, you know, uh, referred to me. 
and all of the nice comments that everyone is leaving. So if there's anything you want to hear or see or talk about, feel free to leave, uh, leave any type of question in the comments. I leave all my personal information in the description. You know, my Facebook, my Instagram, my Reddit, my Snapchat, everything is in there. Um, Till then, I'll see you on the water. And you know, of course, I'm going to always leave it with this. Make sure you go out there and get yourself a yellow mouth because it's about that time. Don't forget the line siders either because it's meeting season and there's some big girls out there. And I do want to say thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing all of my videos. Uh, the channel has grown at a phenomenal rate now. I'm keep this thing going. So again, hats off to everybody. I love you all. Waste deep wave fishing is here to stay. Let's keep this get, let's keep this thing going. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. One love. Be easy and tight lines, my friends.